This is Twit. Third, third one, third one. Um, I'm going to put this in the broad category of doing important open source work. And I'll mm-hmm. start, I was going to start with the first example, but then the last show, there was a guy who had a laptop with a sticker on it, and it made me want to reverse my order. So I'm going to open with, with oh, Cringe. That was a, cr- gonna, oh, that was a Cringe with- sticker from Mary <laughs> yes. Jo Foley. He's exactly. talking about Micah Sargent's uh, beautiful <laughs> yes. Elvis, his uh, yeah. blue suede Surface Laptop 3. With a so, cringe sticker on it. Exactly. You know, this is the year that we really got obviously serious about uh, embracing uh, the work that Google has done through Cro- through Chromium and mm-hmm. saying, wow, there's this open source project. Uh, we've got an issue with our browser that it, the compatibility is just very hard for us to keep up with the web on. What if we were to be really radical and say we're going to uh, do a browser that is the compatibility of Chrome with the trust and 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 things that you love about Microsoft, and so you know very close now to shipping to shipping Microsoft Edge. Uh, I've been thrilled with the quality of it. I've been using it now for many many months, and again this goes squarely into this category of. Uh, wow, we're working on a, an open source project that is now going to be a Microsoft browser that will ship with Windows. It'll be the default browser for Windows. It gives us a ability to bring a browser to the Mac and to older versions of Windows. And of course, already we have it with Android and iOS. And so I think our browser story just gets so much better uh, because we have embraced uh, this open source project. And now we're, of course, contributing back to it. Uh, and that is kind of cool. We're making that open source project far more accessible. We've done a lot of work on accessibility with lots of our software, and we have to have a browser that's super, super accessible for people who might be low vision or uh, various other needs they have. Touch is something we're contributing back. ARM64 is something we're contributing back. So, you know, I think that's another one where if you had said six years ago, hey, we're going to we're gonna redo our browser on Chromium and we're going to contribute tech back to that open source project, you know, you probably would have said, Never, you know, when hell freezes over, that'll happen. And yet, uh, we're really excited about it, and I can't wait to to get it out early in the new year uh, and see what people, you know, see what people think of it. Uh, so that that was the first open source one, uh, and then the the second open source one, and then I'll I'll pause for comments. Is just uh, the, you know, what I'll call the dream that is GitHub uh, for us. And from that perspective, I just mean, um, you know, this is a tool set that. Just tons and tons of developers around the world are are de- betting on. Um, two, 10 million new developers joined GitHub this year. The community is now 40 million developers strong. Uh, 80% of them are outside the U.S., which is kind of stunning. Uh, and we have almost 2 million people, 2 million students who are using the platform as a learning platform. Uh, and lots of educators are using it to teach uh, how to code, and real-world developer workflow is built on it. About 2 million organizations are now using GitHub. 2 million organizations, it's crazy. Uh, 35 of the global 50, uh, of the global Fortune 50 companies are actually making contributions back to Git, to Big GitHub, which is kind of awesome. Uh, so we've just seen, we've just seen GitHub be this thing that I think everyone was worried what would happen when the acquisition happened. And Nat and the team have just done a beautiful job uh, taking care of that community, adding top requested features, but also exploding the usage of it. And I think Sati was quite visionary when he said, hey, we see the world, every company is hiring engineers, and there are going to be more engineers working at non-tech companies than there are working at tech companies. And GitHub is a very important tool that they're going to use. And so we have to make it uh, something really special. We have to make it a trusted, secure uh, thing. And one of my favorite things we've done on GitHub this year is to introduce this thing called CodeQL, which I, I don't actually think you guys have talked about, although I may have missed a show or two. Uh, and code, CodeQL is basically a, a code analysis engine that can look at the code you're using, because uh, most people start new projects with open source code that they didn't write. Uh, and it can find security vulnerabilities across the code base that you might have in your project and then try to you know eradicate that security issue sort of forever so we're trying to take uh, GitHub and bring all the good things forward with it, but also add an element of trust and responsibility and, and security to it uh, at massive scale. Uh, and it's a real issue we heard from from board of directors where they worry that their engineers are creating code, leveraging somebody else's work, and they're just not sure how safe and secure it is. Mm -hmm. And so GitHub and Edge are my two choices around uh, this notion of us embracing 
open source, continuing with the theme of multi-cloud, multi-platform, multi-ecosystem. And I'll pause. There may be nothing you have to say. <laughs> well, we, uh, Mary Jo and I had uh, talked a little bit about Edge uh, between us earlier, and mm -hmm. I think we're both curious. Um, I, I think we're on board with what you're doing with Edge. I think it makes tons of sense. Obviously, internally, not having to keep up with the, all the browser engines and all that stuff is uh, yeah. is excellent. Uh, do you have uh, you Microsoft? I guess uh, have further designs on Edge. I mean, do you uh, think this could be? A product that gets you know appreciable gains in mar you know usage share. Um, uh, do you, I mean, do you, or is it this just about um, providing a better inbox browser that's more efficient, it's easier, um, you know, to update and can be updated more frequently, et cetera? I mean, but do you do you see Edge kind of competing better, you know, just as a product as well? Without a doubt, that is our aspiration. It's not just yep. you know having a decent mm -hmm. default choice, uh, which I think was sort of the second thing you were sort of saying. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. We absolutely feel like we can innovate in the browser space on top of Chromium, uh, and we've done. You know, obviously, getting this first version out is really critical to us. As you mentioned, being able to update it more frequently that'll be really important to us. But the team is very excited not just to ship the product. The team is very excited to actually add capabilities that both commercial customers absolutely love uh, and as well as consumers absolutely love. One quiet small one that hasn't yet gotten as much attention as I think it might over time is, you know, of course we support in private browsing, but we also support in private search. Uh, through Edge. So if you're using Bing through Edge, you know, in private browsing means you're getting in private search, which essentially means, you know, we're not seeing any of those queries that you're firing off through your search engine. And enterprises really, really love that. Uh, it's one thing to have your searches not, you know, be stored in, I don't know, some search history, but it's another thing to not have the company, in this case, Microsoft, uh, seeing those in any way, shape, or form. And that's what in private gets you. So I think building a really innovative browser for consumers and for commercial customers is something we can do. And I, we absolutely have aspirations to have it have real share. Uh, how long that'll take, I, I don't know. But you shouldn't think of it as like an inbox app to Windows that we just kind of maintain. Uh, this right, is a, right. a absolute battleground uh, for us. And we're really excited to see if we can innovate in ways that matter to customers. And then I think the right. share, you know, the share will follow. It does. It feels to me like you're kind of using Chromium based edge to pull Bing along and Bing's pulling that along. It seems like those two products yeah. are maybe more joined at the hip than many of us think of them as being. Yeah, Is as usual. Correct? As usual, spot on. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, okay. that, a huge percentage of Bing usage comes from uh, comes from the browser, uh, yeah. whatever the default search engine is. The browser, and of course, we mm -hmm. find that Edge customers typically use Bing much higher rates than a Chrome customer or a Safari customer would too. So they're absolutely very, very connected. And up until recently, they've also been very connected to Windows. Uh, but now, by embracing Chromium, I think we can, you know, we can go to more platforms more easily. We're already on Android. Mm -hmm. And iOS and bringing it to the Mac will be exciting for us too. Um, and so really creating a Microsoft 365 experience that transcends the operating system, as you guys heard Satya talk about at our Surface launch on uh, those little tables that we let you sit at uh, at that yes. event. Uh, <laughs> those are next, awesome. <laughs> yeah, the next Surface launch, I wanted to just let you know, I will announce it right here. The tables will be taller and they will be smaller. <laughs> and <laughs> we're, we're going to Make more more couches for our fans. Yeah. Soon they'll just be and the fire hydrants. <laughs> Would be good. Okay. It's going to be like a little breakfast bar yeah, we'll that's just, just like, like a, a few inches wide. And, and We're buying a bunch of like Delta Coach, you know, those tables yeah. that you put down and coach. Yeah. We're going to yeah, make yeah, tray tables out of that. Tray tables. Yeah. We've got some tray table <laughs> tables for at a, Excellent. At our it's going to be good. Right. Excellent. Good. Looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. So, Mary Jo, yes, to answer your question, absolutely. Uh, okay. You're totally, you're totally right. Those are very connected. Okay. Of course, people will have the ability to switch their default yeah. search engine when they use Edge. So, if they want to use Edge and use Google or uh, some other search engine, they'll be able to switch that. They're not, uh, yeah. uh, but they are connected in the way people use them for sure. 